Lord, give you a praise this morning. Praise you, Lord. For you are good. Forever we will dance and sing. For you are good. Can we lift up the name of Jesus? I said, can we lift up the name of Jesus?
stood in the presence of the King. The presence of the King. We lift our hands to you this morning. Just wanna be with you, King of Glory, King of Glory. Fill this place. We just wanna be with you. We just wanna be with you. Yes, the world. Yes, the world. 
Just want to be with you. We will sing hallelujah till you come. We lift our voices, church.
God, we just worship you, Father God. We welcome you here tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We give you all honor. We give you all praise. We give you all glory that is due to your name, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for your presence that is manifest here tonight. And Father God, I pray that you move in every home right now, Father God. Fill every living room, every bedroom, every car. Wherever anybody is, Father God, I pray that you meet them at their point of need. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that this will be a transforming word, Father God. This will be a reviving word, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We give you all glory, we give you all honor, and we give you all praise that is due to your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday's midweek service. We're going to go straight into it today. I've got a word for you and I believe that it's going to bless your heart today. Um, I believe that God is going to speak to each and every single one of us. So for those of you taking notes, I'm going to be speaking today on a peace that surpasses all understanding. Say that out loud with me. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Um, we're going to be exploring this today um, and we're going to jump straight over to Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. So grab out your Bibles wherever you are grab your bibles get them out let's turn together psalms chapter uh, chap, um sorry not psalms philippians chapter 4 verse 7 philippians chapter 4 verse 7 philippians chapter 4 verse 7 you should all that be there with me now philippians chapter 4 verse 7 and it says and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So here we see about a peace being speaking about, spoken about that surpasses all understanding. So it gives us a really big, good hint that this is not a natural peace. This is not a normal peace. This is a peace that surpasses all understanding. And he says, not only will it surpass all understanding, but it's the very thing that will guard your heart and your mind um, in Christ Jesus. So this is a very sp specific, special type of peace that God is referring to here. And then if we flip um, um, a little bit back to Galatians ch chapter 5, uh, verse 22 Galatians chapter 5 uh, verse 22 we see another type of be peace being spoken about and that is a peace that is spoken about in the fruit of the spirit so Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 says but the fruit of spirit the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering kindness goodness faithfulness and it lists on self-control etc so we see the Bible talk about two different types of peace here. One that is given to us by God, it's a gift, and one that we cultivate, grow and manifest. The one that is given to us by God is an internal, it's an inward peace. The one that we manifest, the fruit of the Spirit, is an external peace. So it's one that we give out. So we have an inward peace and we have an external peace. And so we're going to be exploring both of those today. So the inward peace is given to us by God. It's found in God. It's um, an inward manifestation. The outward manifestation is the peace that we give out to others. So one is, one is inward and one is outward. So let's turn to Mark chapter 4 verse 35 to 41 and we're going to explore the inner peace today so mark chapter 4 verse 35 to 41 we're going to explore the inner peace given to us by god in mark chapter 4 verse 35 to 41 mark chapter 4 verse 35 to 41 Sorry, my pages don't want to turn. It's a bit stuck. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. So it says, On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and the other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? 
Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? So we see in this portion of scripture where we have the disciples in the boat with Jesus. They're crossing over to go somewhere else. There's a massive storm that um, comes and scares the disciples. Jesus is asleep in the boat. So he is absolutely fine. He's sleeping. He's resting. They are so disturbed that they go down, wake him up and say, how can you sleep? Look, this is what's going on. We see Jesus go up. He rebukes the wind. He rebukes the waves. He tells them to be still and they're still. And then he turns to the disciples and says, how have you got such little faith? So we see here that the peace that is given to us directly, um, given to us by God is directly connected to faith. You cannot experience a walk in the fullness of the inner peace without having also faith coupling it. So the inner peace that we are given is directly connected to faith. When the disciples were focused on the storm, their peace shifted because it was not connected with faith as well. For many of us, it's a similar thing. Because our peace that has been given to us by God is not lined up with our faith in God, whenever situations and circumstances come that differ from what it is that we think that we need to be seeing at that time, all of a sudden we're tossed to and fro, we're anxious, we're experiencing worry, we're experiencing fear, we're experiencing doubt because our peace is not anchored in the faith of who God is. It's anchored in our belief system, our external um, view. It's not based on who God says that he is. The kind of peace that I'm talking about today, the kind of peace that God gives you um, that is an inner peace is not based on circumstances. It's not based on what you can see. It's not based on what's in front of you. That's why it says a peace that surpasses all understanding. In the natural, yes, there's a storm. In the natural, yes, you know, our lives are in danger. But in the spirit realm, Jesus is in the boat. And many of us lose focus of the fact that, yes, there is a storm happening. Yes, I've just lost my job. Yes, I don't know how I'm going to pay this next bill. Yes, my husband looks like he's walking out the door. But I forget that sometimes Jesus is in the boat with me. And he says that he will never leave me nor forsake me even till the end of the age. He says that I've been young and I've been old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. Um, I, I know that what it looks like in the natural with my children, but the Bible says that if I train up a child in the way they should go, when they're old, they will not depart from it. So yes, the storm is raging. Yes, the waves are hitting the boat. Yes. The wind is blowing, but when I know that Jesus Christ is in the boat with me, he's in the stern with me, that's what keeps my peace. Not based on the circumstances, not based on what's in front of me, but based on who God is. You know, we are so used to going somewhere, you know, we go somewhere where it's a beautiful nature wise. You know, we go to somewhere where it's got ocean views or an amazing view. And we may say, oh, wow, this is so peaceful. This is so lovely. I could stay here forever. But how many of you know that that is very much based on the external, what I can see when uh, it begins to rain the next day, we may not feel that as at peace with our surroundings or our circumstances if a hurricane comes through that town all of a sudden it's not tranquil anymore because that is very temporal it's very much based on emotions it's very much based on feelings we need to get to the point where we don't base our peace on what we can see this peace that god is speaking about is based on the inward revelation of who god is it's when we measure our circumstances against God's character, then we're able to walk in peace. So yes, this may look like it's, it's shifting or it's moving right now, but I have seen the hand of God move over and over again. I know God for myself. That's why with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they were able to step into the fiery furnace and they said, if we perish, then we perish. But I know that the God of heaven is able to save us. They were able to have that peace in the midst of what was 
an incredibly trying situation because they lined up their peace with who God was. When we line up our circumstances with who God is, then all of a sudden the peace that surpasses all understanding comes because we know that his plans for me are for good and not for evil, to give me a future and to give me a hope. When I understand who God is, that's when the peace comes. But I cannot have that peace without having the faith in who God says that he is. Amen. Second Kings chapter four. Turn there with me. Second Kings chapter four, verses 18 to 37. 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 And it says, we see a, a, a woman here um, who the prophet comes to her, he promises her a, a child, she conceives, she gives birth to a child, and we pick up the story in verse 18, and it says, And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father to the reapers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to a servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and then died. And she went up and lay him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door up upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, what, Why are you going to him today? Is it neither the new moon nor the Sabbath? And she said, It is well. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, uh, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, It is well. Now when she had come to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. And so she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get, um, sorry, did I, did not say deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him. But may like, but lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went back to meet him and had told him, saying, The child has not awakened. When Elijah came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he called Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite woman. So he called her and when she came into him, he said, pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet, bowed down to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. There's so much that we can take apart in this story about this incredible woman of faith. But what I want you to see is that her faith and her peace walked hand in hand in this process. Had her peace wavered, her faith would have wavered. Had her faith wavered, her peace would have wavered. They go hand in hand. We see that she's not in denial that her child has died. But she knows at this moment, falling apart, wailing and crying and, and howling and calling all the neighbours and telling them what's happened is not going to bring her back her promise. She realised that it was by holding on to the peace of God, holding on to his promise that, God, you said this. You promised me this. I didn't ask you for this. This is your gift. And based on your character, Father God, I'm going to hold on to that. You are not a, a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. If you've said it, will you not do it? Father God, you gave me this son. And therefore, Father God, I hold on to that promise today. And even though it looks dead in the natural, even though it looks like all hell has broken loose in the natural, Father God, in the midst of that, I find a peace 
peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. And regardless of what it looks like in the circumstance, I'm going to saddle my donkey. Regardless of what it looks like in the circumstances, when somebody asks me, I'm going to say it is well. When I'm on my journey and there's people coming backwards and forwards, how is your child? How is your marriage? How is your financial situation? How is this? Your response will be, it is well. Not based on the fact that you're in denial, but based on the fact that you know who God is. And you know that if he's promised it, he will fulfill it. He would promise what he started, he will finish. You understand that he is the author and he's a finisher. He's a perfecter of your faith. And that is what keeps you grounded. That is what keeps your peace. That is what anchors you today. It's not because you're in denial. People around you may be looking and saying, this girl's gone crazy she doesn't understand does she not watch the news does she not see what's happening in the economy what is she talking about what is he talking about but you understand that it's not based on this world's economy it's not based on this world system it's not even based on what you can see right now your children may be wiling out and acting out your husband may be acting like he's um, become gone into business with the devil himself your wife may be acting like she's lost her mind but you know what's in those times where we hit our knees that we allow the peace of God to saturate us from the crown of our head to the soles on our feet and I declare the promises of God over my situation and my circumstance father God in the natural it looks like this but father God I hold on to your promises Lord Jesus I thank you Lord God that you go before me and you prepare the way I thank you Lord God that their soul I claim it for the kingdom of heaven right now yes in the natural it looks like they don't want to set foot in the doorway of a church but father god you've made a promise to me that as for me and my house we will serve the living god i declare over my family and my situation and my circumstance right now that not one member of this family will leave this earth without knowing you as their lord and savior i declare that they put this prophecy on their tongues i declare that as they sleep father god that you speak to them in the night season i speak the blessing of god over my family and my situation and i walk with without fear. I walk without worry because I know the God that I serve. I carry a peace that surpasses all understanding. So regardless of what how dead the situation looks, she knew to look at the God of the promise. It's that peace that will allow you to speak out what you can't see in the natural. Peace and faith walk hand in hand. It's about time that we put on the glasses of faith. You know, in the natural, if you're having struggle, um, if you're struggling with your sight, if you're struggling with your, um, I, I don't wear glasses, but I think it's your long term, your long vision and your short vision, whatever it might be. You go to an opti optician and you um, obtain the right glasses. They change the lens so that you're able to see clearly what's in front of you. Well, some of us need to put on our spirit spiritual faith glasses today if I'm struggling to see in the natural what God is saying I need to get into the word of God I need to put um, his word before me I need to put on another lens in the name of Jesus and I need to begin to see through the eyes of faith if my peace is being robbed by because of what I see in the natural I need to get into the word of God and find out what he says about my circumstance find out what he says about my situation if my health is is deteriorating if i'm struggling with my health go into the scriptures and find the scriptures that speak about healing that he will cause my um, health to spring forth speedily that he was wounded for my transgressions he was bruised for my iniquities by his stripes i'm healed if i'm believing god for a house Find the scriptures and begin to declare it. That he he makes a, um, a, a, a house of peace for those that trust him. Begin to find the scriptures based on your circumstances. And you begin to speak those scriptures in. You begin to declare those scriptures over and over again. Until you begin to see the manifestation of faith arising on the inside of you. Peace will come when faith comes. Faith comes by the word of God. They all go hand in hand. You can't leave this word on the shelf all week and then expect to walk in faith and peace um, the rest of the time. It doesn't work like that. You need to get this word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. It's the word of God that keeps you. It's the word of God that acts as a shield when doubt and fear and anxiety and worry are presenting themselves to you. It's the word of God that will keep your focus, that will keep you on point in the name of Jesus let's turn to John chapter 14 verse 27 
John chapter 14, verse 27. John chapter 14, verse 27. Turn there with me. John chapter 14, verse 27. I hope this is helping you this evening. John chapter 14, verse 27. I speak peace over you right now in the name of Jesus. And I silence every voice of the enemy that has tried to tell you anything else than what the word of God says in Jesus' name. John chapter, chapter 14, verse uh, 27. And he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your heart, um, let not your heart be troubled. His peace he's given to you. That's a promise. That's a declaration. That, that, is the, that is the word of God over your life. He has promised this to you. He's given you this promise in the name of Jesus. It is yours. Take a hold of it in Jesus' name. He says, my peace I live, leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. It's not based on the world's version of peace. The world's version of peace is standing in a field with flowers all around you and going, this is peaceful. It's based on emotions. It's not based on who God is. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. What is it to cast? something the word cast means to act, an act of throwing something forcefully if i throw something across this room forcefully it's not landing in front of me is it it's landing way over there when we cast our cares upon jesus we're throwing it at him we're saying god i let go of this completely you know what i don't know how i'm going to get this house but god i give it to you right now god i don't know how you're going to save my marriage but father god i give it to you right now god god i don't know how to raise these children in a godly way and how to give them to you but father god i give them to you right now what am i doing i'm letting go you cannot forcefully throw something without letting it go. In order to forcefully throw something, not only do you let it go, you let it go with might. When we say cast all our cares upon him, we are forcefully giving it to God. Father God, I let it go. I completely let it go. Many of us, what we do is we, we drop it right in front of us. And then the minute that um, anxiety or worry comes, we, we pick it right back up again. No, what the Bible says is, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you to cast is to forcefully throw away what it is that you're holding on to whatever it is that you're carrying today whatever worry or anxiety or fear that you're facing today i encourage you i deplore you i declare over you forcefully cast it upon god today let it go colossians 3 15 colossians 3 15 it says and let the peace of god Rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of God, Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. My question to us this evening is, who is ruling your heart? Who rules your heart? Who has the keys to your heart? Is it God? Because if it's God, then you should have peace. If it's your job or your circumstance or the economy or Sky News or your spouse or your children that are ruling your heart, then of course you're going to be tossed to and fro. One minute you're happy, one minute you're sad, one minute you're scared, one minute you're fearful because God is not the one ruling your heart. So if you find yourself what and anxious all the time fearful all the time doubting all the time today is the day where you say father god i repent and father god i make you the king of my heart right now in the name of jesus as long as someone else or something else is ruling your heart you will never have that point of peace in the name of jesus some of us lack peace today because of the choices and actions we are making Romans chapter 8 verse 6, turn there with me, Romans chapter 8 verse 6, Romans chapter 8 verse 6, we have an inward peace but we're also supposed to be manifesting an outward peace, Romans chapter 8 verse 6 and we're going to go through some of these quickly, Romans chapter 8 verse 6 and he says, for to be carnally minded is death, 
But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I'll say that one more time. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Some of us are experiencing a lack of peace today because we're carnally minded. What does it mean to be carnally minded? Our mind is for the things of the world. We're more concerned about the world than we are our spirit. So we are investing more into the world system than we are into the spirit. Our Bible gets put on the back burner and we're more concerned about the things going on in the world. We're more concerned about TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook and um, what's going on in, on the TV and, uh, and our friends and going out to parties and everything else. Of course you're going to lack peace. The Bible says it here. But to be carnally minded is death. Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It sounds cliche. But this is where your peace lies. As long as you're pursuing the flesh. As long as you're pursuing those things that feed the flesh. You're going to lack peace. Isaiah 26.3. Isaiah 26.3. Turn there with me. Isaiah 26.3. Isaiah 26 3 says you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Is your mind stayed on God? What does it mean to stay? It doesn't say the, um, he will keep those who's, uh, who's my, uh, he will keep you in perfect means, peace whose mind is visiting God. He says whose mind is stayed on him. Stayed. If I say I'm staying somewhere, I need to pack something. I need, I, I'm planning to stay. I'm planning to stay the night or the weekend or whatever. I don't, I'm not passing through. I'm staying. If I say I'm coming to stay with you, the expectation would be that you will be with me for a length of time. When our mind is stayed on Christ, it means that we stay with him long enough to stay. That means I'm still long enough. My mind is on God. Romans 12, 18 says, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. As much as is possible, depending on you, live peaceably with all men. Those people around you, some of us love contention. We love to fight. We love to pick a battle. Count the spoils. With your spouse and with your children, they're not your enemies. With your sisters and your brothers, your mom and your dad, children with parents, you're not each other's enemies. When God made you, he made you with a purpose and everyone that is connected with you is not by accident. But as if we are not actively pursuing peace, we will not find peace. If we are not actively pursuing peace, we will not find peace. If I'm not actively pursuing peace in my home, in my marriage, I will not find peace. What does that mean? When I walk past that the room and my husband's left the towel on the floor or my wife's left the, her, her hair stuff wherever or her makeup out, I have a choice in that moment. Do I pursue peace in that moment or do I, do I pursue war? When my children have left something out or whatever, I have a choice in that moment. I can make my home a war zone or I can make my home a place of peace. I have the power to change the atmosphere in my home by my attitude to those around me. Am I actively pursuing peace with those around me? Matthew, 5, chapter, Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. In order to look like God, you have to see peace manifest in your life. If your life is full of contention and strife and bitterness and arguing and dissensions and division, you are not reflective of the, of the son of Jesus. You're, you're not reflective as a daughter or son of Jesus Christ. I know that that sounds harsh. I know that that sounds horrible, but it's the word of God. Peace should follow you if you are truly a son or a daughter of God. Peace should follow you because he is a God of peace. 
If a lack of peace is constantly following you, then I would say you need to get back into the word of God and you need to get yourself back right with God in the name of Jesus. First Peter chapter 3 verse 11 says, let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Turn away from evil and do good. If you are pursuing the things of the world, if you are pursuing things that are evil, gossiping, backbiting, strife, lying, stealing, getting involved in gangs and, and, and keeping bad company, being in places that you need not to be, you're going to struggle to experience peace in your life. Psalms 119 verse 165 says, Great peace have those who love your law. And nothing causes them to stumble. That's a great scripture. I'll read it one more time. Great peace have those who love your law. And nothing causes them to stumble. The, the, the Bible gives you the biggest hint here. Guys, if you want peace, love my law. The more that you read this word, the more that you put this word on the inside of you, the greatest your peace will be. James 3.18 says, Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. I love that scripture. James 3.18 Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What does that mean? The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. When we are in right standing with God and we are sowing peace intentionally, just like anything, you know, you sow kindness, you get back kindness. You sow uh, bitterness, you get back bitterness. You sow unforgiveness, you get back unforgiveness. You sow peace, you will get back peace. If you want to see peace in your home, sow peace. It, it sounds simple and it is. If you want peace to be seen in your homes and in your family, in your workplaces, in your life, you have to sow peace. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. If there is confusion and if there is um, anxiety and there's fear, God is not in that. You know what? It's peace that actually allows me to know when something is of God and when it's not of God. God is not the author of confusion. If you are about to step into a relationship or you're about to step into a financial decision or a business transaction and it feels like there is just confusion, there is just discord, it just doesn't sit right, the peace of God will also help to let you know when to step forward and when to stand still. And for me, if I have to fight and contend for something, you know what? Let me stay still and see what God is saying here. Because I'm not going to fight through that lack of peace. That peace that God gives you will allow you to know when something is right and when something is wrong. The peace of God will actually save you from a lot of heartache and a lot of pain if you will listen to it. The absence of peace is the absence of God. I will say that one more time. The absence of peace is the absence of God. If God, if the peace is not there, then God is not there. If you don't have the peace, don't keep going forward. Don't keep pressing forward. Some of us, we know we don't have a peace about a situation. We don't have a peace about a person, but we override that and we keep moving forward. And then we find ourselves in all kinds of trouble because we ignored that peace. Pick that peace back up today. Lastly, we should not be using our beds to toss to and fro with worry and anxiety. Psalms 4, 8 says, I will lie down in peace and sleep. For you, O Lord, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. If nighttime is a time of torment and worry and anxiety for you, then you are not at peace. God's peace is here and it's available today. Regardless of what situation you're facing, what circumstance you're facing, you might be like the Shunammite woman where it looks dead around you. You might be like the disciples in the ship where it feels like 
all waves and storms are raging. It may be that you just don't know which way to go. I'd say to you, hold on to the peace of God. And don't believe the lie of the enemy that God has forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. He sees you and he hears you. Do not grow weary in doing good. But in due season you shall receive your reward. Let not your faith fail you today. I know that you can't see the end. And I know that it looks like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But God is a faithful God. He's a promise keeping God. And if you will just stay the course, if you will just keep the faith, you will see the manifestation of God's glory in your life. I promise you that. I've seen him do it over and over and over and over and over again in my life. His timing is the perfect timing. Don't cast away your faith today. Don't cast away your peace today because it doesn't look like he's moving at your pace. Pick up the peace of God today. I speak the peace of God over your life. Regardless of what you're facing right now, whether it be a court case, whether it be your marriage, whether it be your children, whether it be your finances, your job, whatever it might be today, I speak the peace of God over your situation and over your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, Father God, for your peace right now. That surpasses all understanding to just fill every single home, every single family, every single life right now in the name of Jesus. Every single heart that has been troubled, every single person that has been carrying fear and anxiety, we let it go right now in the name of Jesus. And we hold on to your peace right now. We hold on to it like an anchor, Father God. And we thank you, Lord God, that it's your peace that anchors us. It's your peace that keeps us. It's your peace that sustains us, Father God. And I speak your peace that surpasses all understanding to be with each and every single person right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a song that I sing over my kids. Um, I don't know if I can sing it now. I'm not a singer. I'm not Alicia or Denise or Sam or any of the worship team. But it says, you are my peace. You have broken down every wall. Um, you are my peace. You have broken down every wall. You are my peace. You are my peace, so I cast all my cares on you, for you care for me. You are my peace, you are my peace. I encourage you to just sing that over yourself this week until you feel the peace of God fill your home and your heart as you sing that every single time the peace of God just comes sing that this week declare it over yourself and speak the peace of God over your situation amen with every head bowed and every eye closed I just want to give you an opportunity if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior I want to give you an opportunity to pray this prayer with me right now God came into my life many, many years ago and he has changed and transformed it in ways that I can't even begin to tell you. He is, he is the greatest peace that you'll ever know. Pray this prayer with me and mean it with all your heart. Say, Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart, to be my Lord and to be my personal saviour. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and wash me in your blood, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. If you prayed that prayer, you've just asked Jesus to enter into your heart. It says that all of heaven rejoices when one person gives their life to Christ. If you prayed that prayer, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to put a Bible in your hand. Please email us at v2bchurch at aol.co.uk and we'll be able to get that to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Before we go, we're going to um, receive our tithe and our offering. What an incredible, um, uh, incredible place to be able to give to God. For many of us, 
The Bible says to um, trust in the Lord and with all our heart, lean not on our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. For so many people, the reason why they don't tithe today, the reason why they don't give offerings today is because they don't have a trust and a faith in God. But you know what? I know that for me, without this principle, without the principle of tithing and offering, I would not have what I have today. I would not be where I am today. Everything that I have today, bar none, is based on this principle of seed time and harvest. I've seen God open up the windows of heaven over my life. So if you need, if you would like to um, uh, give today, if you'd like to bring your tithe and your offering today, you can do that by either um, going onto our website, www.b2bchurch.org. Um, uh, b2b community church uh, dot com or you can also give via paypal um, using the church's email b2b church at aol.co.uk all the banking details are online as well um, please go on there and check them we do have some new banking details so please make sure that you go on and double check the bank details that you had previously and um or you can just give via paypal or online whichever way there's a donate now button online you can do that amen can i pray with you as we um as we give today father god i thank you lord jesus father god father god for the amazing um honor and privilege of being able to bring our tithes and our offering to you father god and i pray that as we give today father god there comes up as a memorial as a thanksgiving offering before you father god and that you open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive it father god in Jesus' mighty name we pray amen amen and just remember we've got a midnight prayer on friday um, we've got our main church service on Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, we've also got, uh, what else do we have coming up, Dom? You, you do the announcements. Um, huh? Um, we've got, I know we've got our relationship seminar. I, I mean, I don't know all the announcements, to be honest. Um, I don't have them in front of me. But please make sure you listen out to, uh, for them on a Sunday um, for all the different announcements. And make note of them. If there's events, I encourage you to register straight away um you also can join us for prayer on a sunday every sunday at 8 30 just come through to the main auditorium you can join us for prayer on a sunday and then we've got prayer on a monday at 9 p.m as well and we've got bible study um, on a tuesday this is on instagram for those of you that have been asking where you can find it it's on instagram if you miss it you can go back and watch them um, and then obviously our midweek service every Wednesday at 7 30. God bless you, have a great evening and we'll see you on Sunday.